Welcome everybody to the action from Noah Veer Stadium in Kobe to kick off match week four of the J1 season. And only one team has managed maximum points through the first three league fixtures of the year. That is today's host, Vissel Kobe, who aim to continue their hugely impressive start as they take on the Champions League finalists, Arawa Reds, who picked up their first points of the season a week ago against Serizo Osaka. Well, Kobe around 300 miles southwest of Saitama from where Orawa Reds have travelled, although originally they hailed from this very city for the first eight years or so of their existence before being moved north by Mitsubishi back in 1958. We're at Masaki Park, an impressive setting at what was one of the venues for the 2002 World Cup and holds just over 30,000 in the long, narrow city of Kobe, which between the coast and the mountains sitting by Osaka Bay and overlooked by Mount Rocco. All these clubs have been familiar adversaries in recent seasons. When Arawa Reds have tended to have uh, the upper hand, winning three of their last four visits here and six of the last eight, including the most recent by uh, last minute David Moberg goal to nil in June of last year. So Kobe have won only three of the club's last 16 meetings in all competitions, but they are the form team coming into this one. And the fans in really good voice ahead of kickoff. It really has been an impressive opening to 2023. So great, isn't it, to have the singing back in stadiums in J-League this year. And as of Monday, by the way, the face masks will uh, no longer be mandatory inside the stadiums. Excellent atmosphere ahead of kickoff for this uh, eagerly anticipated meeting. Two clubs with uh, big expectations. Both uh, struggled to meet them really last year, and it has been a... Difficult start to the domestic campaign for Arawa Reds again this time around. There were signs of progress, certainly, against Sarazoa Zaka last time. Both were in action in uh, midweek with the start of the J League Cup competition. Vissel Kobe did suffer their first defeat of the season when beaten here by Nagoya Grampus. A much changed team, though. Only one of uh, the 11 that starts the day played in uh, midweek. Opponents, Arawa Reds, started that competition with a goalless draw at Shonen Belmare on the same night. We opened the J1 season with defeats at FC Tokyo and at the champions, Yokohama F. Marinos. It has been quite some start to the season for Vissel Kobe. In complete contrast to a year ago when they failed to win any of their first 11 matches and ended up in a relegation battle, eventually finishing just four points clear of the bottom three. This time around, after three wins from three, eight goals scored and only one conceded, they're out to try and establish themselves as surprise title contenders. Opponents, Aroa Reds, arrive with a Champions League final to come next month, a competition they've won twice before. A founding J-League member, they are five times champions of Japan. And a club with a rich history and tradition, but who were uh, disappointed to finish only ninth in the table last time around. Stage almost set at Noah Veer Stadium in the sunshine. Two o'clock start local time. Pleasant conditions today of around uh, 20 degrees Celsius out there. Let's have a look at the team news for you. Vissel Kope have made just the one enforced change from last week's 4 0 win here over Gamba Osaka. Ryoho Kikuchi went off injured early in that game and is replaced today as he was then by Yuki Honda at centre back. Coach Takayuki Yoshida has reversed the 10 changes he made for the midweek J League Cup opener against Nagoya Grampus. Only left back Ryu Hatsusi also started that game from today's team 
Yu Asako leads the attack he scored in the last two league matches. There's a very attacking looking lineup with that now familiar front three at the start of this season, including the former Newcastle United player Yoshinora Muto. Yuchi Nishimura is today's referee, one of the most experienced in J League, where he's officiated since 1999. He's been to two World Cups and an AFC Champions League final. The VAR this afternoon is Ryo Tanamoto. And the video officials have been busy in the opening weeks of the season. Arawa Reds are unchanged from the side that started the 2-1 home win against Sarazoa Zaka a week ago, where they picked up their first points of the season. They too changed almost the entire team for their J-League Cup group game at Shonen Belmare on Wednesday. Marius Hoibrat and the recently signed Norwegian centre-back is the only starter from that game to keep his place today. Andres Iniesta remains missing. He's been back in Spain recently for the birth of his fifth daughter. Dutch striker Brian Linson begins from the bench. It is the veteran Shinzo Kuroki who leads the line back from a lone spell has been first choice at the start of this season. Takayuki Yoshida in charge of Vissel Kobe for the third time, having become their fourth coach of last year. Maciej scores it in his first season in J-League, his first job since departing Lech Pojna in the summer of last year. Still getting to grips, really, with this side, with the Arawa Reds inheriting a team that Qualified for the Champions League final under his predecessor. Ricardo Rodriguez, the Spaniard, leaving the club at the end of last year. So kick-off then in Cope. Vissel looking to make it four from four at the start of the new season. Arawa Reds, though, have had their number more often than not in recent years and have been improving after a sluggish opening to their own campaign. We are off and underway. The familiar crimson colours for the home side. Red Diamonds in their change kit, in the sky blue and black. A side that love to dominate possession. Historically, the Reds, and that seemingly has been the case under the new coach this year as well, as they venture forward for the first time. Covered really good ground there. It's an immediate decision for Iichi Nishimura to have to make. Free kick given in dangerous territory. Little give and go with the captain, and it was uh, Hiroki Sakai forward from full back that was uh, pulled back. The concession of this free kick. As part of Japan's squad at the World Cup, Sakai, third season at the club after five years with Marseille. 74 caps for his country. He will be one of the key figures, you suspect, in this contest. Certainly one of the most experienced in the uh, Reds team. He uh, whipped into that dangerous area, he didn't quite fall for the visitors and pretty comfortably cleared away. See what they were trying from the set-piece. 40% actually of their goals last season coming from set-pieces or penalties. They really did struggle to score from open play. Zuma, who's down here. Has been something of a stop-start first couple of minutes. on him was late from uh, Gotoku Sakai. Yeah, Kobe right back as we look again at the uh, free kick, which was threatening. It was nearly but not quite as it was uh, played in towards Takahiro Akimoto. Struggle for goals so far this season. Orawa Reds, continuation really from last year. Had to score away from home in uh, three matches on their travels in all competitions. They've managed just the two goals in J1 so far this season under Scorsa. They are 
are the team that have begun on the front foot this afternoon. Seeing plenty of the early possession. Alexander Schultz to uh, Marius Hoybraten. All European partnership at centre back. Dane now in his third season, joined for this year by the Norwegian Hoybraten. Try and build from the back. He's a two time title winner in Norway with uh, Bodo Glimt. Marius Hoybraten. He's the only player to start every game in every competition this season for them. Vast majority of the uh, first team regulars were given the night off on Wednesday. The start of the J League Cup, the group stage. Ito just getting a foot in, that's what he's in there to do in that defensive midfield role. Partnership between he and Ken Iwa will be an important one. Sakai advanced in what is really the home team's first foray forward. Corner kick to come. So you got Yuruki going across to take it from the other side. He's facing a former club today, three years he had with the Reds. Left in 2021. can come up with from the corner. Quite a bit of movement in the middle. Well defended initially. Plenty to try and pick out this time though. Was uh, whipped back in by uh, Yuki Honda who come forward for the initial set piece. Now has to try and hurry back again maybe because here is the counter attack. It's going to be pulled back. Frustration for David Moberg. It's Captain Sakai who was hurt here on halfway. It's been an eventful start to his afternoon. was a little frustrated that he wasn't able to continue given the position that he'd found himself. He might have been in an offside position. So the referee pulling it back for the uh, the free kick. They have it here in a promising position again, looking to get Okubo into it. The rookie back doing his defensive duties was caught. Sukito just uh, leaving his leg in. Clear cut concession of the uh, the free kick. The Saitama born player risen through the ranks with the Arawa Reds. To become a really important player for them in the heart of midfield. Nakamoto has started the season as the regular left back. He's the one that's conceded the kick here. Certainly had a settled side so far. All but the centre forward Kuroki have started every league game this year. He guided back to uh, Nishikawa. Tenth season with uh, Arawa Reds, and he's been first choice really in all of them. At the age of 36 now, the former Japanese international. Two time member of the J1 best 11. Hatsusi. Saito coming under pressure. Getting it back by Honda to uh, the goalkeeper Daya Makawa. Very much the first choice in the uh, Vissel Kobe goal. Having been born in this city. 
his seventh season with the club. Not quite as experienced as uh, the man in the opposition goal, but uh, not too far short. Shikawa, coolly done. Cut out by Osaki. Quick to get players back behind the balls, Orawa Reds. Komoto did uh, well enough and coming under pressure there. Shepard that ball behind. Not much in it, is there, in the uh, early exchanges here? Morella Reds looking to improve on what's been a pretty dismal away record of late. They've only won three of the last 23 away league matches. On of uh, the last eight in all competitions outside of Saitama. tend to like coming here with uh, victories in six of their last eight visits. They left it late last year with that Mobo Carlson goal in the 90th minute, all that separated the sides. Susi looking for options from the throw. One back well, and they look for Moberg. Under sticking to his task. Opportunity opening up again for him. He actually started the first two league games of the season after signing for Kyoto Sanga, or from Kyoto Sanga for this season. Lost out last week with uh, Kikuchi's return to the team, but he was injured midway through the first half. Honda came on and keeps his place today. His shots. The German-born Dane finding Sakai. Moberg. Finds a real creative threat in this side. Vissel Kope seemingly aware of that, given the way that they've tended to double up on him in the the minutes of the match. Second season for the Swede now since he signed from Sparta Prague for last year. Your rookie. And again, at least that was the intention. This is Yamaguchi. Can't score it in the win at concert on the second week of the season. Which began with a 1-0 victory here against Avispo Fukuoka. And even more impressively last week, 4-0 against Gambo Osaka. Three of those four coming in the second half. After Yuya Osako had given them the lead just three minutes into the match. Quite so dramatic from the start today. These two teams uh, still showing each other plenty of respect early on. Here's Maikawa, who will clear it away. The first meeting between them last season ended 2 2 in Saitama. Kobe only winning one of the last seven. It was a notable win, though. It was 5-1 here in October of 2021. Roki's got a little bit of an issue. This might tell us why. Just took the ball uh, not quite flush in the face, but clearly caught him. 
was on loan at Comsa last season. Returning this year for an 11th season at the club. Must have been 16 caps for Japan coming back in 2015. The bench in the first two games of the season before stepping into the starting lineup last week and keeping his place today ahead of Brian Linson, the former Feyenoord forward. This time in Saitama has been uh, badly disrupted so far by injuries. Restricted him to just three appearances last year when he joined the club in the summer of uh, 2022. Available in reserve for later as Vissel Kobe try and find a way through. A little patient period of possession. Probably settle for that in the circumstances. Scoring a lot of their goals last year from set pieces, uh, Arawa Reds were also susceptible at the other end. Something that Scorch has been doing a lot of work on the training ground to try and rectify another early test here. And your rookie is going to take the corner kick. A little posse of players to try and aim for round about the penalty spot. So where he delivered it to, what followed wasn't quite so threatening though. Susi missing his kick. They've been in free scoring form at the start of the season. In fact, nobody scored more than the eight goals that they've managed going into today. It's the same as Shannon Belmare. Conceding just the once, the joint best defensive record, along with uh, Nagoya Grampus. We were winners here on that Wednesday in J League Cup. In the same section as uh, Sanfrecce Hiroshima and Yokohama FC as well in Group C. Here come the Red Diamonds. Didn't get too far. Sako was uh, alert to the danger. Sako able to turn. Plenty of space on this near side for Yuruki. He's located impressively. Three to try and pick out. And he got enough on it, as it turned out. Nishikawa wasn't necessarily entirely convincing goalkeeping. Important that he was able to intervene. At the expense of another corner. He's had a couple of goes already here, hasn't he, from this position? Koya Yokuri. Let's see what he can do with this one. Slightly deeper, and he found a little bit of space there, Hedasako. Wasn't able to make the most of it. Just trying to guide that back goalwards, I think. But it was watched wide in the end. He scored in the last two league matches. was a surprise omission from Japan's squad in Qatar at the World Cup at the end of the year, having scored 10 times in 11 qualifiers to help them get there. He wasn't selected for the finals. 25 goals in 57 caps over the course of the last decade is a very useful return for his country. Playing J-League after eight years in Germany. He's the one playing the ball forward here. Steps in quickly. He's looking to combine with Osako with uh, Yoshinora Muto, another Bundesliga old boy. And his name really with Mainz. Is he just offside here? It's close court. Like he'd lost control of it anyway. Muto, who had three years with Newcastle, although the last of those was out on loan in Spain with Ibar. His third season back in Japan now. Six goals last year. 
Seke. Couldn't quite help it on as intended, but will settle for the throw, will the skipper. We Brighton, this is Akimoto. He's comfortable playing further forward down that left-hand side, but does seem to have slotted in as full-back and as Scorzer at the start of the season. But uh, Ayumo Ohata was probably expected to take this year. First against 12th, this at kickoff today. You wouldn't necessarily know it from the uh, way in which it started. Side flag going up, that's near side. Well by Sakai. Hatsusi. Honda will guide it back to his goalkeeper. Seven years he had with uh, Kyoto Sanka. Yuki Honda, they've got plenty of options at uh, centre-back seemingly this season, it looks to be uh, an area of strength for them. Matthias Tula, the uh, Brazilian who was on loan from Flamengo, second half of last year, has now signed permanently, he's yet to feature this season, he's another to come back in, in that particular position. the start to the season achieved without their captain. Just Iniesta has been back in Spain. He's become a dad for the fifth time. He's in the last year, reportedly, of his contract in Kobe at the age of 38 now. Fellow Spaniard, fellow signing from Barcelona, Sergi Samper hasn't featured because of injury since early last year either. Esther is available again. It does give uh, Yoshida a little bit of a dilemma, maybe. When the team was set up, it had to be very different last season when uh, Iniesta was in it to uh, accommodate his skill set at this stage of his career. Now, this is promising. This is their first big opening of the game, and it's a fine first time finish. Aroa Reds take the lead almost out of nothing, really. 20 minutes in. Ito caught it impressively, having found himself in space to do so. There didn't look an awful lot of danger here. Got one ball over the top, and he caught it flush first time. Four goals he got last season, Atsuki Ito opens his account for the new campaign. Credit to Okubo for the awareness to play into his path and claim the assist. And it's a fine flashing finish. And it's a shock early lead for the visitors as Kobe concede at home for the first time this year. In contrast, score away from home for the first time this year. And that really does set this one up beautifully. Makes the last remaining 100% record coming under early threat. Gone for Ito since he scored in a 6 0 win at uh, Jubilo Iwata in August of last year. They went on to be relegated. He hasn't got another goal since in this division until today. That victory remains their last away from home in J1. 
a statistic that they hope will potentially end here. Midway point of the first half. to Honda it's not been an instant response from Vissel Kopec Kuzuma this is Sekai Moberg didn't really have any room in which to work this week did have a brief spell in English football with Sunderland Moberg Carlton a decade ago now. Restricted to just a one League Cup appearance during his time in the northeast of England. A bit more room in which to work here. And Vissel Kopek. Sako forward. Almost comes for Yuruki. Nishikawa taking evasive action. Challenge has been laid down to the home team. It's the first time that they've been behind all season. The only goal that they previously conceded was a 96th minute penalty at a time when they were already 3 0 up at concert. Uncharted territory for them in this campaign. A little bit of danger again here. Kubo playing his part in pulling a few strings and the bounce of the ball favoured them. And wide by Kozumi, who didn't make the most of it. And further early encouragement for Scots' side. Majority of his uh, managerial career in Poland. Mecze Skorza. Exceptions being a little spell in Saudi Arabia about a decade ago. And he actually coached the United Arab Emirates under 23 team for a couple of years, some three seasons back when he left that particular post. Title winner with Lech in Poland. At least from his contract there in the summer of last year, for personal reasons, took a short break from management before it was announced back in November that he would be taking charge of Urawa Reds for this season. Be encouraged by what he's seen from them here, and they advance again. Moberg taking over, taking the pass from Sakai, who had continued his run. Still with David Moberg to curl one in. Maikawa makes that his. which he could do about the goal, Maikawa. He hasn't had that much else to do. And his team trail. They'll try and build from the back here. Arawa Reds will need no second invitation, really, to apply the pressure high up the pitch, though that is notably part of their game plan. And it's a game plan that seems to have persisted, regardless of the uh, changing identity of the coach. The Scots are side playing... Uh, a similar way in that respect to uh, Ricardo Rodriguez's team. Had a couple of years in the job. Leading them to that Champions League final. Which they will contest against the uh, holders of Saudi Arabia, Al Hilal. First leg on the 28th of April. The second leg at home on the 5th of May. It's a competition that actually started back in April of last year. Champions League shifting calendar for next season. It'll be played August through to May from here on in. A bit too much on that one. And Osaka couldn't quite reach it. He's claiming a corner.
He says he will have a big part to play if they are to get themselves back in this. Only lost two of their last 11 league matches going back to uh, last season. Actually lost the uh, last two of last year. But eight wins in ten now either side of that. Sustaining the improvement that they showed in the second half of last season after the return of Yoshida. There's Mopak. Wriggles into a little bit of room. And still with David Mopak. Ambitious though to take the shot on from there. Well, he certainly has the skills. A bit of an individual mindset, maybe, that Scorcher is trying to incorporate into the team ethos. He loves to get on the ball and dribble, but he wasn't able to find the finish. He did score eight times last season. He was their top scorer in his first year at the club. previously three times by Sweden some uh, five years ago now the last of those They're not sitting back on the uh, slender lead as we approach the half hour mark Well, and he then to give the ball away briefly, Arawa Reds. Kuzuma stepping in to win it back with support from Ito. And all the way back they go to Nishikawa. And Gucci got his foot in against Sakai. And Susi with the throw really been able to generate any sustained momentum in the match yet. Vizel Kobe as they look for a foothold in the game. It's been a fairly sluggish start from uh, the Ushi. Options for them here though. Just nicked away from Osaka, didn't quite come for Yuruki. Continue to give chase. Ayo Asaki. That's Susi. Yuruki to Osako. Starting to see a bit more of the ball now. Switching the play. Yamaguchi. an excellent home record of late. Including at the start of uh, this season. Going further back, six wins from the last seven here in the league, dating back to September. Again, they've lost it in dangerous territory, though. Okubo. Moberg. Those two trying to combine. Not quite with the requisite precision to uh, pick a way through. It might come back here to Moberg. It did rather fortuitously. Again, there's an agitated reaction from him. Able to combine this time with Kuroki. His thought was brought back from his uh, loan last year. That concert as a backup option, really, in attack. Finds himself as the starting centre forward. As Osaka goes down. There's only one player that they can ill afford to stay down. It's caught from behind by Alexander Schultz. The former Michelin man. Scored 
their equalising goal from the penalty spot last week against Sarazoa Zaka did shots. So they came from behind to get their first points of the season in that 2-1 win. Beaten 2-0 at both uh, FC Tokyo and Yokohama F. Naranos in the first two games of 2023. Here's the goal scorer Ito for Arawa Reds. Kuzuma taking over. Just marshalled away from goal. As they prioritise possession. A defensive minded midfield player, that's his primary function in the team. Atsuki Ito proving again today that he's got a goal in him after those uh, four that he scored last season. It certainly helped them settle into this game, provided them with a platform in this game. He also scored twice actually in J League Cup last year. This came through for Akupo. Moberg was on the move in the middle. Nakawa oh, were able to gather it. Kuroki really charged with trying to hold things up in attack, bring others into play. Nearly but not quite in that respect thus far. Two shots apiece in the game. Heading towards the last ten minutes of this first half in the afternoon sunshine in Kobe. Here's a good ball. Here's Muto. Trying to make his presence felt, maybe a little too literally. Awkward for Hoy Brighton back there. Deep into the uh, knockout stages of European competition last season with Bodo Glimt. Centre back also an area, I guess, like Vissel Kobe, where the Rama Reds are fairly well stocked this season. They were anticipating, I think, the departure of Takuya. Iwanami, whose uh, move broke down during the off-season. He stayed put, he's back on the bench today. Yamaguchi, who's down here. It's Yuki Honda, who uh, just went over the top of Kuroki and was hurt probably as much by the landing as anything there, which was a very heavy one for the centre-back. Came on because of an injury at centre-back last week. Another concern on the sidelines for Takayuki Yoshida. He was appointed or reappointed more pertinently at the end of June last year and kept them up. He was, as I mentioned earlier, their fourth manager of last season. Miguel Angel Lotina was the man he replaced, who'd only had a matter of months in charge. Wasn't able to stop their really desperate start to last season. a year on, but difficulties to face today. They haven't yet really got to grips with the game. Sako was trying to step in but has lost it, now has to hurry back because there was a little bit of space to advance into where he would have been defensively. Susi joining in with the attack from fullback, Mitsuki Saito 
And now Leo Osaki as well. Vincent is able to get back in position defensively behind the ball. So they may well need to be here. Getting their attacking game going yet. Scored in their last seven home league matches in succession, dating back to last season. In fact, home or away, they've scored in their last ten since a goalless draw here against Nagoya Grampus in September. Yet to really threaten this afternoon, though. It was a little risky. Okay, having to settle for the throw. He scored twice in the last game against uh, Gamparo Saka, did the right back. Kotoku Sakai, notable because he'd never scored more than once in a season before last Saturday. about had the time to turn shut out though by Osaki get it back again Smith for Sakai Yamaguchi to Osaki Yuruki brought it down neatly enough that's Susi into traffic but winning the free kick That's the only player in this surface or Kobe side to start every match in every competition this season five of them now in his fifth year at the club since he joined from Gamba Osaka so the player has previously been called up by Japan without winning a senior cap has won this free kick as we go into the final five minutes of the first half. It's in a promising position for them. They've not yet been able to uh, make these set pieces count. Ruki and Hatsusi, the two standing over it. It's going to be uh, left for the latter. And it doesn't trouble the target. goal last season he wasn't really close enough with this one rendered the presence of those that had ventured forward from the back somewhat academic in the penalty area has scored twice in cup competition since his last league goal in the defeat here against Kyoto Sanga in April of last year scored last summer in the uh, Emperor's Cup against Kashiwa Reso in the uh, quarter-finals of that competition to Kashima Antlers last year. Also exited the Champions League at the quarter-final stage. Arama Reds with uh, genuine hopes of winning it for a third time. It's understandable, maybe, that a bit of their focus at the start of this year would be on the continental competition. They can ill afford a slow start in J1 for a second successive year. It was their formal lack of it really early on last season that contributed to that disappointing ninth place finish. So to open with back to back defeats this year was a huge disappointment. They're in the process perhaps of putting that right as uh, Yuriki tries to get in behind. For Vissel Kobe, he will force the corner. Well, starting to dominate a little more now in pursuit of parity. Susi's going to take this one, the left back. 
Davis on the uh, delivery. And again, there was no threat really at the end of it. Around red spared by the referee's whistle here. The player penalised was Osaki. Was up against Ken Iwa and conceded the free kick. Came into the team last week against Gamba Osaka for his first start of the season. Leo Osaki has kept his place today off the back of that victory. Able to get a foot in Yuruki. Might come for Osaka. Did well to hold on to that. Had to drop deep to get a bit more involved, though, Yuya Osaka. Yamaguchi forward. Osaka is the furthest forward from fullback. Nakamoto with him. Options in attack here, though. Saito forward. Final ball hasn't been there yet. Very content to let this one go. Arawa Reds having to do a bit more work without the ball, though, in the latter stages of this first half. And if that pattern persists in the second period, it may become more problematic for them. Finally balanced the game right now. Here's Osaki, Honda. Getting a bit higher up the pitch. Too much on that one, though, as we go into two added minutes at the end of the first half. It's been a fairly frustrating first half for Vistel Kobe. Improvement is going to be required if they are to maintain their winning start to the season. Two points clear of the champions. F. Marinos going into today. By Osaki. press from uh, Arawa Reds has just dropped off a little bit in the last few minutes. Seemingly content to let the home side have it in that part of the pitch before they then mix it up long. Rosaka got the flick on, but it's harmlessly through to Nishikawa. They've dealt with the threat of Osaka pretty well thus far. Braten, who was in the way. Osaki. Probably only time for one more attack in the half of Vissel Kope. Osaki's the deepest lying midfield player, seeing uh, plenty of it right now. He's the one trying to ping the pass forward, but there is no way through. be Harawa Reds to take a lead into half-time courtesy of the goal from Atsuki Ito just before the midway point of this first period well taken goal coming against the balance of play maybe but at the other end there have been precious few opportunities created by Vissel Kope looking to stretch their winning start to the season their free scoring start to the season but little sign of that in the first 45 minutes, we're at half-time at Noah Veer Stadium. It is Vissel Kobe nil, Arawa Reds one.
So we are almost set for the start of the second half then at Noah Fair Stadium. The leaders need more because Vissel Kobe trail here against the Rawa Reds by a goal to nil. Fine goal it was as well just before the midway point of that first half scored by Atsuki Ito. And it remains the difference at the interval. So much more really is going to be required by the home side if they are to maintain their winning start to the season, even perhaps their unbeaten start to the season. Sitting atop the table after the first three matches. So it is the visitors, uh, Arawa Reds in their change colours, who get the action back underway again. They've certainly provided a platform for themselves with that first half display. Really well taken goal. Very little afforded Vissel Kobe by way of encouragement at the other end, which has been their defensive organisation. The home team will be disappointed, I'm sure, still with the lack of threat that they have found going forward. In contrast, really, to how they have begun the campaign. Scoring seven times across their last two matches in J1 before today. Let's see if it's a, a different story in this second half. No uh, changes by either at the interval. Saki forward again. Second time of asking, really. Well, Osaka was coming back from an offside position. Sakai, who had covered good ground before losing it. He does get the free kick, though. Referee had to think about that. No reversal, really, between Sakai and Akubo. It's just contact. So a free kick to come. waiting to take it. Actually everybody back there for Arawa Reds to try and defend this. Swings it in, not particularly threateningly though. The visitors will be able to bring this clear. They haven't got the deliveries right yet. Because those set pieces really have looked Thus far, their best route back into the game. They had gone five without a win in J1, dating back to October until uh, last week's victory against Arizona. Zaka had Arawa Reds. Still very early on in the piece to say whether they've turned a corner or not, but a victory here would uh, suggest as such. And this is promising again for them. If he can get the, the shot away here. Oh, that's so close. Koizuma. Must have thought when that left his boot that he was about to double the lead. He just seemed to stand off him a little bit. Created that glimpse of goal for himself. The wrong side of the net that was bulging. Scorer of three goals last season, Yoshio Kaizumi. That was uh, very nearly his first of the current campaign, having seen teammate Atsuki Ito open his account in the first half. From a not dissimilar territory. And the second goal for the visitors early in the second half be an awful long way back for Vissel Kopek. They have it here with Muto. And again, Yoshinori Muto. In by Yamaguchi. Sarko. Forced wide, but he still has it. Look by Sakai.
Sarko, he's heavily involved. It's miscued, but it's uh, harmless in the end. Shikawa able to clear. But Diamond's breathing a little bit of a sigh of relief after that, though, because that could have been a different story. Put these back-to-back -back league wins on the board. They only won two of their first 16 league matches of last year, Harawa Reds. It's despite the fact they were beaten actually at home just twice all season, nobody suffered few defeats in front of their fans, but it was a different story on the road. So this would be a notable success if they are able to go on and win it. Sakai with the throw. is very much on the Ushi. That's the home side. Yuki Honda forward. Sarko did well to get his head to it, but there's nobody on the end of it for them. That's their defence turned into attack by Urawa Reds. It didn't quite come for Okubo, and his frustration, I think, got the better of him. And leaving his leg in. And catching uh, Gotuko Sakai. Acknowledge the error, did a Kupo. They need the home fans to try and get behind the side. They have done their bit in fairness for most of the match. Haven't had too much to shout about just yet. Sarko trying to change that, and he was just caught, and it's another free kick. In a promising position, there's been a few of those already. It was a little awkward for Alexander Schultz in how the ball bounced as the two were tussling. So it's the Dane that's conceded the free kick. Really important player in this uh, Rawa red side is the centre back. Winner in both uh, Belgium and Denmark. He's potentially landed his team with a little bit of a problem here. Susi looks like he might be the favourite to strike this. And they go directly for goal. There is a, a useful angle in that respect. It would have to be spectacular. And it wasn't. And it could be brought clear on the counter here. Moberg did well to keep his feet. El Kupo takes over. And just showed a little bit too much of that to uh, Yuruki. Fine margins right now. Muto. Iwa did well to get a foot in. It's asking an awful lot of uh, Asako to give chase, though. Hasn't quite had the service so far, the number 10, as he looks to score for a third game in a row in J1. Sakai. Back to uh, Neikawa. Committed back by Schultz to uh, Nishikawa. And still had a... Pretty quiet afternoon so far. The appearance number 558 of his career in this league. And they're trying to beat the press. They haven't been able to be, uh, to beat the press. And the shot when it came from Osaka was well saved by Nishikawa. Still the threat, maybe. Yuya Osaka picking up the pieces again, this time trying to turn provider. It's been missed as Yuruki tries to reach it. And a 
don't think he was quite able to reach it, for which Sekai will be grateful, because it was he that wasn't able to cut out the ball back in. Side anyway, I think, when that was played in. This is how close they came, as it fell favourably at the feet of Yuya Asako. Save that Nishikawa would have expected to make because it was close enough to the goalkeeper. Just up just in front of him, a little more awkwardly. But some encouragement for Vissel Kope. Probably as close as they've come in the entire game. Going down as their first shot on target in the entire game. Does sum up the story so far. They will hope it will be a turning point leading into a more promising chapter in this second half. Oh, it's a costly slip, maybe presenting possession back to Osaka. All sorts of options in support. It was Yuruki whose shot was charged down. Just maybe wasn't quite able to get it away quickly enough. But they are getting closer. The slip this time was from Ken Iwa. Again, he just about gets away with it. There's a couple in fairly quick succession now. Susi waiting to take the corner kick. as far as Osako to try and bend it back in and Nishikawa makes it his Be grateful for the chance to grab it and just earn his side a little bit of respite it's the first period of the game in which they're coming under some sustained threat really Timely for them to be able to venture this far forward at the other end. Akimoto with the throw. Try again here. Finds Koizumi. Wider by Moberg. They do have men in the middle here, but again, the cross is too close to the goalkeeper. It's a comfortable claim for Mikawa, who has uh, released it quickly. Osako. Ruki on the charge. Gets the shot away, and it is a whisker away. And they're claiming the corner. Yoruki is starting to take up some more promising positions now. This will spark from the goalkeeper's long clearance from inside his own penalty area. Helped on by Osako into the path of Koya Yoruki. Did take a touch on the way across goal, and it is a corner kick to Vissel Kope. And Yoruki, who helped win it, will take it. Definitely much more menace about them right now than at any stage, really, of the first half. corner didn't clear the first defender though but it's out only as far as Yamaguchi deeper one from Yuruki this time it hasn't been dealt with but it was gifted back really to the goalkeeper more of uh, frustration the Arawa Reds lead is looking a more slender one now Nakamoto by Muto, this is Saito, and he was trying to pick out Osako in the middle, I think, rather than go directly for goal, which he might have been tempted to, still no end product, and Rawa Reds getting stretched. So many defenders in the way, perhaps, to attempt the pass that he was trying to pick. But another corner to come, Yuruki again will take. To 
much more threatening area this time. Susi did well to squeeze in the cross. He didn't have a lot of room in which to work. Yamakawa up from the back. Unable to keep the header down. Just the one goal from centre back last season where he was a regular in the starting lineup, as he has been at the start of this season. Tetsushi Yamakawa. His fifth season at the club since he joined them from university, former Japanese under-20 international. We're going to see the first change of the game, and given the way it's been going in the last few minutes, no surprise might be that it's the visitors opting to make that change and bring on Takehiro Sekine. It's going to be David Moberg that makes way. He was to the fore in the first half, less so since the restart. Sakine hasn't started a, uh, a league game since September, but he did begin the J League Cup match on uh, Wednesday night. It's his second spell back at the club where he started his career. He left briefly for Ingolstadt in Germany. He's straight on the ball. A relatively regular starter last season, Sakine 20 times in the 11, 10 times off the bench, just the one goal. Maintains his record of coming on as a substitute in all four matches at the start of the new season. This or Kobe needing to maintain the momentum that they were just beginning to build, though, in attack. Kawa to Sakai. Forward by Osaki. Muto beaten to it by Hoybraten. It's a very animated match. Scorsa on the touchline right now. He knows the importance at this stage of the game to his team. Osaka found himself outnumbered. So we'll settle for that. Fans behind that goal beginning to believe again, I think, that the goal might be coming. This side has shut them out here since Nagoya Grampus in J1. On the 10th of September last year. Did do that again in J League Cup Wednesday night. Yuruki's corner. A little too frequently that the first line of defence has been able to clear the danger, but Yuruki will try again. It's away from Kuroki, trying to pick the pass for Saito. He keeps it alive. Sakai couldn't force his way through from fullback though. It's going to be a long half for Arawa Reds, I think. Given the lack of ball that they're having now, and they are a team that like to uh, dominate possession. Certainly not able to just at the moment, just over the head of Asako. Yuruki will reach it. Muto was in space. Wasn't picked out, though. Koizumi. Kuroki dropping deep, linking the play. They have the uh, spare man forward there, which brought about the challenge, it's going to bring about a card, it's a yellow card. Akimoto it was who was leading the charge and who was clearly caught. Little option really but to attempt the challenge, although there was cover coming across, but Sakai decided he couldn't take the chance. So his name is the first one taken, actually, by referee Nishimura this afternoon. I don't think he can have too many complaints. Ken 
Iwa is the one who's grabbed hold of the ball. He might fancy this. Just about within striking range. Kubo is the other player in the conversation. some way to silence the home fans if they could score a second here having been coming under pressure at the other end he went to the left of the ball Akubo to the right it will be Iwa to try and dink it in instead they try something a little bit different Hoy Bratton returns it and it's clear before it could reach Kozumi nearly but not quite for Arawa Reds a little bit more work on the training ground that could well have uh, reaped a reward. Yamakawa. Just our Kobe change is uh, imminent. Sasaki waiting to come on. Osako has it here. Didn't quite reach Yuruki as intended. Referee forced to step in. And who's down? Ruki Sakai. Both uh, clearly felt the ball was there to be won. Both uh, were equally within their rights to go for it. And Sakai coming off the worst. And here's the change. It will be Yuruki to make way for Deju Sasaki who started and scored actually in the 3-1 victory at Contra. He's only started the season, it wasn't enough, that goal, to keep his place in the 11 last week. But he's back on for the closing quarter of this one in place of uh, Koya Yuruki. Who rose through the youth ranks at the club into sixth season with the seniors. Now threat at the other end, there is uh, space here for the shot which was deflected, they're claiming a handball. Kubo's done well to reach it, couldn't quite squeeze it in, the block by Sakai. And both sets of players really asking questions of the referee there. End result is a corner kick as we reach the midway point of the second half. Is there anything for VAR to have a look at? It was outstretched. At the time was on the ground. Free Nishimura was uh, just waiting for word from the VAR, Rio Tanamoto, who's checking for that possible penalty. It was a big shout for handball at the time. a big call in the context of a contest as tight as this didn't give it at the time Nishimura no penalty corner kick is the only reward for Arawa Reds this time it's a good corner though and it's so close to the second goal frame of the goal still rattling the centre-backs we know are always a threat in there. And this was very much a case in point. He was delivering. Schultz was unlucky. And we brought in. Always uh, such a threat, as I say, and it was the, the latter who met that one. It's the uh, deep delivery this time from the corner. All of a sudden, it's uh, Arawa Reds beginning to uh, apply some sustained pressure again, courtesy of these corners. Important for them at a stage of the game when they were coming under pressure. But they have just been able to uh, redress the balance, but Hoibrand was so unlucky not to make it 2-0. You never know, that could come back to cost them yet. Once more, they try something similar, and this time it's the roof of the net. The 
further underlining the uh, potent threat potentially of the centre backs. If anything, maybe got in each other's way there. Navigation, Schultz and Hoybraten. Just the one goal in it, but both teams getting closer. So we're going to the last 20 minutes now. Nothing in it in terms of the stats, really. There is another yellow card here, though. And it's uh, Sakino hasn't been on long. But he's uh, into the book already. Just overstretched himself. And caught the Visilkobe substitute, Sasaki. Confirmation of the caution. Everybody all in a line awaiting the uh, delivery here. Which is out only as far as Yamaguchi. And a horribly overhit, really, by Osako. Who acknowledges as much. Time just starting to tick away for Takayuki Yoshida. She turns uh, 46 on Tuesday. Back in his uh, third spell in this job. First in charge between 2017 and September of 2018. He returned uh, briefly in the summer of 2019. A stint that lasted just 10 games, lost eight of them, and resigned. How much greater success when he was uh, brought back last year to really save their season, lead them away from the relegation zone. Lead them to the top of the table going into today. Will come under threat later in the weekend if uh, this should stay as it is. Looks like he just lost his footing for a split second or so. Susi had a little bit of an issue. Saki. Asking Sasaki to chase it. Schultz shuts the door. Another change, this time up top. Kuroki is going to be replaced by Brian Linson. Still in search of his first goal in the J-League. After signing last summer from Feyenoord. With whom he reached the... Uh, Europa Conference League final. He was beset by injuries really as soon as he arrived in Saitama. But he did start the first two games of this season. He's had a pre-season under his belt this year, hoping to build on that. He's on for the conclusion. Regular goal scorer in the uh, Eredivisie for a variety of clubs. Looks of Groningen and Heracles and three years at Vitesse before two seasons with Feyenoord. Scored 13 times actually in the area of Izzy for the Rotterdam side before his uh, move to Japan in the summer of last year. Looking to get involved straight away. Yuki Honda. Osaki. He's a physical presence and experience to the midfield, Leo Osaki, in his sixth year at the club. Can also actually fill in at centre back.
Phoenix is starting to come thick and fast already at this early stage of the season. With the group stages of the J-League Cup now underway. And as mentioned, there's two legs of the Champions League final to come for Arawa Reds. Here's Osako, he's able to bring it down. Sakai tries to stand up the cross. And it was comfortably gathered by the goalkeeper. Fighting ready for Nishikawa to come and collect. Going to the closing quarter of an hour of the 90. Muto. Here's Sakai. Was able to squeeze the cross in. Despite the presence of Akimoto. Saved by Hoy Brighton. With a fraction away at the other end. From a corner kick from making it two. Now he's had to concede one. Which, uh, Rio Hatsusi will take for Vissel Kobe. A bit more on that one. It's not away yet. Shot's got a touch to it. And then as far as Saito. Yamaguchi. Susi asking some further questions. Osako. Again, they had plenty to try and pick out in the penalty area. But over the head of everybody and harmlessly behind. And it's still not quite happening for Yoshida's side, so he's going to make another change. Bring on Izumi in place of Osaki. Third straight appearance off the bench. There's another who started the J League Cup game in midweek. What is his uh, first season of uh, senior football? Toya Izumi is on for the much more experienced uh, Leo Osaki, who will bring more attacking tendencies to that midfield role, maybe. Needs must in that respect for Vissel Kobe. Offering the dynamic of the midfield a little bit, maybe. That's a good ball. Oh, and having got there, Okubo couldn't find the finish. Just missed his kick almost entirely. Well, he's been really lively throughout. Tomoaki Okubo and playing a big part with the presence of mind to chest the ball down for Ito to score what remains the game's only goal. Feel he should have done more with that one, though. They have had opportunities to double their advantage, which still may yet prove costly in the overall context of this game, when all is said and done. Still the uh, perception persists, maybe, that it's just not happening for Vissel Kobe in attack. They just can't quite get it together in the final third. made by uh, Yoshida to try and affect things not quite working yet Sasaki hasn't really been involved since he came on we've seen plenty of late drama in J League already this season in the opening few weeks and there's scope for more here maybe Hoi Bratton away Clearance completed by Akimoto. The body language, really, of the uh, Vissel Kobe side collectively is on a frustration right now. It does appear to be hindering their attempts to get back in the game. Rawa Red's going to make more changes of their own in a moment. A couple of them by the looks of things. Sui and Okiwara are both going to come on here. 
Yasui, the uh, first to be introduced into the action. He will take the place of the Kubo. Chance a moment ago, his last chance of the game as it transpires. The Koizumi is also coming off to be replaced by uh, Taguya Ogiwara. He's back from spending the last two years out on loan at Kyoto Sanga. He did come on last week against Sarazo Azaka to mark his return to the first team fold with Arawa Reds. He's on as well for the last 10 minutes of the 90. They'll change their entire front four during the duration of this second half. Keeping that defensive unit understandably intact. It continues to stand firm for now. Through for Izumi. Trying to inject some urgency in these latter stages. It'll be a seventh visit here. Seventh win in their last nine visits here for Arawa Reds if they are able to hold on to this slender lead. Extend Vissel Kobe's record in this fixture to just one win in the last eight meetings between them. Brian Linson, who's been operating on the periphery since uh, his introduction. On uh, Yamakawa. Increasingly like the last remaining 100% record in the league is about to go this afternoon. Unless there is something dramatic late on from Vissel Kobe. I do remember still have Andres Iniesta to come back into this team. Schultz, partially clear anyway by Alexander Schultz. Now Linson. So well timed ball, but look at the goalkeeper. Starting position proved important actually for Mayakawa. As he got to that, vindicated his decision to come. Mention the target in the middle, it didn't reach him. And they've not been short of goals all season, Vesel Kope. They are running out of time today. Settled attack in the opening weeks of the season. And the Spaniard Boyan departing at the end of uh, last year. He's just actually gone into business, I think, with Andres Iniesta. They've released a new uh, brand of bike back in Spain in the, uh, the last week or so. A new career for Boyan, it would appear. Currently without a club. Forward here towards Osako. Got something on that. Yamaguchi. Sakai. Linson back doing his defensive duties. Komoto covered good ground. It's a valuable contribution in the circumstances. Would have been any great rush here for the Reds to take this. Edging closer towards the finish line today. 
Second goal would surely help them over the line right now. They have threatened it on at least a couple of occasions in this second half. Okiwara. Linking here with uh, Akimoto. And it didn't quite come for Linson. Okiwara who just cut it back in his direction. Was nearly, but not quite. And here goes Akimoto again. Awkward for Sakai. And they currently have this El Cope where they want them, really, at this late stage of the game. It was that little period, wasn't it? About 10, 15 minutes or so ago, where it looked like the goal might be coming, but they seem to have ridden the storm. They were Rawa Reds, and they've uh, exerted some authority again in the closing stages. Forcing another corner kick here. Kiwara helped win it, he's going to take it. Not too many committed forward this time, but enough to aim at in the middle. Ball needed to be better. He might get a second chance, Ogiwara. It's a heavy touch that ran away from him. Chance to get it in has gone. This on Kobe will have to hurry to get it forward up the other end again. Scores are closing in on back to back wins. Having started his tenure with successive defeats in this division. Rather who met it. the target he has been throughout really Sakine was beaten to that a little too easily maybe and Susi with uh, Sasaki in support as those two try and combine it's a better ball that whipped in towards uh, Osaka didn't quite have the uh, room in which to operate but some reward to come final touch coming off the defender here with the uh, shots the Kobe corner and Susi to take it and it's missed out everybody it was a chance for Muto which was blocked still the danger and Susi of course doesn't come this time Nakamoto saw to that Muto still reflecting on that moment in front of goal that he had. He hasn't had too many of those this afternoon. Kawa inside the uh, opposition half as the goalkeeper played it forward. And his opposite number, Nishikawa, will take his time here. Plenty of chances from the, uh, the corner kicks today. Balls in from the wide areas as well, proving that maybe Arawa Reds are still susceptible in such situations as they were last season, but they've not been punished this afternoon for that. And uh, a couple of minutes plus added time away from a vital victory at Vissel Kobe. Here's Brian Linson. with the ball forward, work back into some space for Linton to have a go, it's deflected. It's cleared by Hatsusi. Clearly frantic closing stages of the game now. Ito. Looks more and more like being the match winner. We'll stop here because... Uh, Deju Sasaki is down. Bit of an issue with the left knee, maybe, but he's quickly back on his feet again. Don't have time to lose this El Cope. Just an awkward accidental collision, really, once the ball had gone. 
that he's still feeling the effects of. Starts for the drop ball, and uh, Sakai threads it forward for Brian Linson, who's going to reach this. Trying to hold off Honda. So Kobe will look to take the free kick as quickly as they can. We'll find out very shortly from uh, Bumpe Ueda, the fourth official, just how much added time there will be. Because we reach the 90-minute mark, and there's just three further minutes from here for Arawa Reds to try and hang on to all three points. been too many alarms for them since going in front 20 minutes in. Lost their last four away league games going back to last season. Now the victory on their travels in six. Very close now to being able to end that particular sequence. He scored twice actually in their last five away league matches. Looks like one might be enough unless can Vissel Kobe conjure up from here. Have to push everybody forward for it. And to the penalty area it goes. They will hope for another corner. They're going to get one, I think. So everybody will stay forward for this. Reds having to do it the hard way at the end. It's never going to be straightforward, I guess, for them this afternoon. Again, the corner is cleared out by Hoibra. Keeper's come a long way. He's got something on it. He might have to hurry back again here, though. Sasaki. No way through. We have said that before. Will break favourably for Saito. Muto. Not quite. They won't give it up though, and Muto will apply the pressure here. Hoy Brighton was able to watch it behind anyway, but the whistle has gone. I think for the earlier one. Off the ball. And then uh, Yuki Honda was caught. Collision with uh, Takuya Okiwara. That's why the referee has given the free kick. It might very well be the last chance. We're in the, uh, the third added minute, but it's a presentable chance, isn't it? This could be the game right here. Sonko and Susi stand either side of it. been able to capitalise on these sort of situations throughout the course of the game. But one last chance to change that. Those fans trying to will it in behind that goal. This to try and preserve at least their unbeaten start to the J1 season. Sanko looks so keen, doesn't he, to assume responsibility. He's the one just to the left of the ball. It has Susi to take it and strikes it straight at the wall, which rose in unison and did its job. Will there be time for them to come again? Launch long as it had to be by Makawe. Did get something on it. Come back by Muto. Big chance in there. And the goalkeeper has it to deny Izumi. Surely the last chance. Just wasn't quite able to force it in. Nishikawa collects it and starts the celebrations. The full-time whistle goes. And the last 100% record at the start of the J1 season also goes today. Vissel Kobe, having begun with three straight wins, are beaten at home at Suki Ito with the only goal of the game midway through the first half. Vissel Kope just couldn't quite get their goal. Joint top scorers coming into today through the first three match weeks. 
There was one last chance for them right at the end, but it was dealt with by Nishikawa. And Arawa Reds end their long, winless run away from home. A first victory outside of Saitama since August. And it's a valuable one against Vissel Kobe. It's finished at the Noah Veer Stadium. Vissel Kobe nil. Arawa Reds won. Entertaining fair throughout, wasn't it? And something of an upset, given the way that these two sides have started their respective seasons but the continued progress from the Reds is uh, picking up pace a little bit now back-to-back -back victories after starting the season with successive defeats the uh, first hurdle hit by the home side who came up short today they weren't at their best going forward so that fine goal scored by Ito just over 20 minutes into the match proved enough for the victory for the Reds they are finding their form encouragingly ahead of their big date in the Champions League final which comes up at the end of uh, next month Vissel Kobe will uh, hope of course that this is a mere aberration and not the start of a slide after a hugely encouraging opening to their campaign. But coming off the back of that 2-0 defeat here on Wednesday in the J-League Cup as well, there will be a few more concerns for Takayuki Yoshida's side. Didn't have the fluency in the, uh, the final third, but it's uh, Arawa Reds who deserve these celebrations, a really hard-earned victory and a clean sheet as well. We'll get some post-match reaction for you, pitch side very shortly Mache scores his team building on that come from behind victory against Sarazoa Zaka with a different type of win today but uh, equally as important and building on the clean sheet at Shonen Belmare in the J League Cup as well on uh, Wednesday night it all suddenly looks uh, a lot more positive in Saitama than it did after those opening 2-0 defeats with which they started the season The trip back home, but as is so often the case when they come here, it will be one to be enjoyed. Let's get some reaction for you. ま、マリウス選手が思って、ま、大郷選手が受けて、ま、ボールが来てる時に目があって、あそこに落としてくれると信じてましたし、あそこに走り込んで、ま、うまく逆足でしたけど、合わせることができて良かったです。このゴールシーンまでの流れが非常に早かったと思うんですが、いかがですか？まあ